Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my light. He has become my salvation. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. My right, dear brothers and sisters, continuing our journey through this time of Easter, we continue to revel in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who takes us from darkness into light. He is the one who has come to gather us together, to lift us up out of the sorrows of this world, and offer us the joy of the world to come. Gathering in his name, let us firstly acknowledge those times when we have fallen away from that great gift, those times when sin has overcome us. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when, by your gift, we have known it more fully, so that those who are freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Well, here we are folks, it's uh, Thursday night and uh, back into the habit of uh, the pattern of uh, going through discovering the Gospels. Um, now hopefully you have your, uh, if you have your home sheet, the one uh, that I uh, sent through earlier on for you, home worship sheet, um, in there you will have the, uh, the Gospel printed out. There you go. Or if you haven't done that, uh, you've got to use your home Bibles, the ones we have from church, uh, if you've got a copy that you bought for yourself at home, that's on page 872, if you're too lazy to look it up, uh, there it is, um, in there. So. <laughs> right, uh, let's uh, read through the Gospel of today, of, of Sunday, so get that right, Sunday's Gospel, here we go. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and will go out and find pasture. The thief only comes comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Okay. So, uh, I'm just going to see if I'm bright and so not very, I look very dark at the moment. I don't know whether that would make a difference. Um, uh, that's a bit better maybe. All uh, oh, my hair's terrible, isn't it? It doesn't stay me How do you think? Did you like that? What do you reckon to that to that reading? Or is it a bit confusing? Um, we've had lots of Matthew and bits, of, uh, and, and uh, of course at the moment, a bit of Luke. Uh, but oh, what have we got now? Mm, John's Gospel. Hands up who understands John's Gospel. Hands up who doesn't. There you go. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> We still we use the same formula, we don't mess around, we have uh, the, the six W's, who, where, when, uh, what, why and wherefore. They serve us well, no point in doing anything else, um, to see how we can uh, unpack this uh, gospel reading which we'll have on Sunday. Um, let's uh, see what we've got now. Do you like it? No, I don't know, let's see. Who is in it? Well, uh, okay, we look at the clue, it says, um, 
uh, Jesus well Jesus is saying it saying, saying the story uh, but what characters has he got in there he's got um, uh, it starts off in the f first ten there uh, but I tell you anyone oh anyone there's a character anyone who's that yeah us could be anyone anyone look at that anyone um, uh, and then we've got a thief and a bandit oh that is there we go interesting uh, thieves and bandits of course represent sin don't they they are sinful people uh, and then we've got first um, in verse 2 there we've got the one hmm a strong phrase that the one uh, um, I said it's indicating you but it's not, not anyone it's the one very specifically chosen kind of word we'll get that to in a minute uh, first th uh, we've, got, we've got the sheep finally we've got some sheep oh, 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 we'll work that out in a minute fluffy things uh, first three gatekeeper gatekeeper oh, that's very strong stuff gatekeeper has power a gatekeeper has power um, no, no, we keep going we've got more sheep we've got more sheep we've got sheep and we've got a stranger hmm get to that in a minute see how that is um, and uh, these are all the figures of speech as it says Jesus used uh, and then he moves on repeats the same thing all the way through so we've got these characters he's using in this uh, in this uh, figure of speech in this um, teaching he's trying to give us so that's what we've got so really we've only got Jesus and then we've got us um, listening in but we've got these characters okay where is it happening well the only way you can do that by folks is get the Bible out and have a look um, where is it happening that's John's Gospel so it's very hard to find uh, any kind of uh, um, geographical reference always handy to have a geographical reference gives us a bit of a feel for the movement of where it's going um, don't really know to be answered it, it, to, to be to be honest um, Jesus rejected by the Jews death of Jack Lazarus no we haven't got anything in the previous bit uh, to say where they've been George I'm sure could correct me at this point um, well it's not far from Jerusalem because the Pharisees have been coming in and out in the last few in the previous chapter um, let's have a look I'm going to move it in. I'm moving in. I should have looked at this up before we got sat down, shouldn't we? Uh, the one who come, she's the woman of Samaria, Galilee, um, Festival of the Booths. And it's not quite, uh, hasn't quite arrived yet at, uh, at uh, Jerusalem. He's around Jerusalem. It's not far off. I reckon he's, uh, I reckon he's around about Bethany somewhere. It could be in Jerusalem as well. Don't matter, really. Okay, so uh, what, what, uh, where is it, uh, when is it taking place? Now, this is where we are in John's Gospel, and it's all a bit oh uh, well, because we know we we know the the rough, the rough timelines of the other ones. We're used to it, really, aren't we? You know, starts off with one one way or another, with either uh, angels or it starts off with uh, um, the uh, genealogy. Um, ge ancestry of Jesus I can't say it uh, but they all, then they all get to the baptism which is the part they all start at and then the the the, the, uh, the preaching tours I love that the worship missions <laughs> of Jesus begin um, John's gospel is very odd though because John's gospel was completely back to front um, it starts off with the trashing of the temple um, just after he's baptised it, it's all completely back to front but this really I suppose you can say it's chapter 10 that's not the actual answer it's in that kind of build up build up towards um, Holy Week um, towards his uh, arrival in Jerusalem uh, and it's all the stuff which is building up um, in, in John's Gospel it's all the teaching which is building up towards the main event which will be the very long after dinner speech and the Passion so and, and the writing, so it's all in that kind of burbling up. So the, in John's gospel, it's very, it's, it's less of kind of moving around and doing great things, but more like delivering great teaching. Um, they picked this up. This is the, the what John has absorbed. So that's what um, when it's taking place. Halfway, just under halfway from that. 
put it otherwise. So, um, what's happening verse by verse? Well, here we go. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, he said in uh, verse 1 there, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'm the way, the truth, the life, says the Lord. You know, that I am, is another view. There's lots and lots of stuff in John's Gospel where the same teaching is repeated through different um, analogies and different uh, mechanisms. We hear of them over and over again because they sink in, really. John, you know, the, the writer of John's Gospel has understood and heard these different uh, records of, of, of the themes that Jesus left with uh, the apostles and disciples and those around him and he's brought them together and says okay and I'm going to encounter this theme and I've got several different ideas of this theme about what we're going to work out um, but I'm going to put the, the sheep stuff all goes together it's quite important so I tell you anyone does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief or a bandit now we're not necessarily talking one man and a dog here um, could be, front of the notice sheet, it's got some very fluffy English sheep on there, I've had British sheep, I've had Australian um, farmers on the, the sheets in the past, I've had um, Palestinian farmers with sheep, so I've had different sheep, I'll give you different sheep each year when we do these Gospels, uh, but this year we've got fluffy British sheep, but it's, you know, we've got one man's dog, you watch one man and his dog, tiny little pen, and there's a gate, the bloke's standing there, go and buy a lad, you know, with his dog and his whistle and his... Uh, and his crook and uh, he holds the gate um, we're talking about this very, very nice and gentle but of course we're now talking about in uh, if we are talking first century we're talking these first years we are not in a nice Yorkshire countryside sorry folks I know it's God's own county and all that lot, but it's not uh, we are in um, uh, in, in Israel the, the, the Holy Lands there are green and pleasant lands in the Holy Lands, uh, well, greenish um, at, at the best of times. And the sheep are quite, mm, they're quite wise. They're, they're a bit more worldly wise, these sheep. They're not quite so dumb as we tend to think they are. And they're living in quite a tough area. And the sheepfold is not something you necessarily get driven into. It's probably somewhere quite safe rocks built probably more like rocks stone stone walls around it or it's in a cave or it's somewhere which has been made or, 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 or discovered by the, the shepherd which is safe it's his place of safety for these animals so it does not enter sheepfold by the gate and why by the gate because you can count them you count them you know how many should be in there and you count them we've all done it anyone's taking kids on a school trip you count them endlessly every five minutes you count if they're all there um, <laughs> it's what you do um, because you know you want them there they should be there they belong they're your sheep and so it brings them in so anyone so if you sneak in if you're trying to get the reward and the safety by another by another route you're in a bad place you're in a bad place is it necessarily the end? well that's up between you and him ok verse 2 the one who enters by the gate the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep a little bit different here we go from one man and his dog here we go standing there holding the gate wide open oh, well, that's better. wide open let the sheep in and close the gate behind no look what happens here the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep he goes in first now this is all at a time this is all through John's gospel isn't it we are haven't quite yet we're almost turning towards Jerusalem in John's gospel where Jesus is going to die and rise again why on earth is he going to die and rise again I hear you ask Good question. Why? That's what the people here are asking. People that are trying to work it out in the first century. Why is he going to die rise again? Because he is coming to open up the gate. The gatekeeper. We know we call him the pearly gates. Literally, you know, he's coming to wake, wake, wake him up. But he's not there behind us this time. Here we go. How does he do it? 
he is the one that goes through first. How do you get through the gates? There's only one way through that gate, folks. Tough as it is, unpleasant as it may sound, death. And it takes you through. Breaks open the gates of death. So, okay, so he goes in, and he is the shepherd of the sheep. So, here we go, we're in John's Gospel. We're trying to understand who Jesus is in John's Gospel. We know about the resurrection because we're Christians. We know all about it. Why on earth do you do it? What is it about? Why aren't we just Jews and just believe in God and have done with it? What is the Messiah about? Okay, because he has died and risen. And here we go, we've got something new going on. There is another stage. We're always waiting for it. It's always on the cards, always promised for the people. This is when it's happening. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. Ooh. The gatekeeper. Now you've got the shepherd and a gatekeeper. Who's the gatekeeper? Aha! Ooh, hello a second. Have you heard all that stuff in John? But I am the Father, the Father and I are the one, I'm one, the Father, I'm the Father and I, who believes in the Father, believes in me and believe, believes in me, believes in the Father and the Father. Don't. All that stuff about his constantly talking to him and his dad. Here we go. The gatekeeper. The one who has made the gate. Jesus is both shepherd here and could say interpret it and interpret it if you want he could be the gatekeeper God could be the gatekeeper but Jesus and God are the same so <laughs> there you go the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice beautiful imagery beautiful imagery isn't it it's his voice follow me all you who are overburdened and, and I will give you rest or, you know, these, we've, we've heard lots of Jesus saying follow me haven't we to the, to the, to the apostle you know, the fishermen leave your nets and follow me and they did lots of things but yet never often not in an easy way sometimes when he calls it, the, 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 the response has been at times not great and I'm not just talking about the apostles here I'm talking about you know it He calls his own sheep by name. Ah! Calls his own sheep by name. We've got something on the, uh, the weekly worship sheet about that. And leads them out. Through the gate and out into where? Wow! New pastures. Pastures new. Interpret that as you wish. There we go. Lovely. You can work that one out. Calls it, of course, by name. Now, but baptism, if you're old enough, Richard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I've called you by name, you are mine. Ooh. You've been called by name. He knows you. He knows you. He knows you before you even were conscious of the world around you. He was with you, knowing you. Right. When he's brought out all of his own, oh, hang on a second, oh, wow, brought out all of his own, what we're we talking about now? So far, it's been a bit nice. Your apologies, be, be his sheep, respond, become part of the flock, trust in him. But when he's brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. Now, you were Jew in the first century, right? listening to this for the first time. There's certain stories you really know very, very well. And we know them really, really well. Moses. Those stories of exile. Remember how they were led out of slavery in Egypt? Following the, get this right, the uh, column of fire by night, the cloudy pillar by day. Moses leading them on through the Red Sea, through all the trails and travails that uh, took them across the wilderness, the good and the bad times, the struggles, leading constantly on. That's extraordinary. When he's brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, just like in the, the um, release from exile. Now, remember, 
We're, this, we're trying to, this is all to try to explain, give you the information to understand why Jesus goes to Jerusalem to die and rise again. Another thing, one of the times he does, we know clearly from everything that Jesus went and died during the feast of the Passover the remembering of the freedom of the people from Israel, uh, from uh, Pharaoh and Egypt, from slavery, released. It's another character of the Gospel of John. There we go. So this is always on the cards. This is yet another attempt to bring people to the place they should be. But this time it's not just out of a kingdom on earth, it's to the new life. The one way we don't need any of this anymore. So, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. How will he go ahead? Well, we will discover that later. We've heard about it at Easter. John's Gospel said, Look, go ahead to Galilee, and I'll meet you there. And they have breakfast, and, he, and their minds are opened, and they understand that now the new way is on, and then the ascension, of course. And now the way forward is open. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, verse 5. They will not follow a stranger, but they will r run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Will they? Uh, problem here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, right, okay. I wonder if this is more a statement or a challenge or uh, a little bit of a scolding. I don't know. They will not follow. If you are faithful to Christ, you will not follow the voice of a stranger. Because you will follow Christ. Yeah? However, sometimes mm, we're not really quite great at that. And we do find ourselves following something else. Not necessarily a voice, but as many things can lead us away from following Christ very easily. Um, from the small to the big, you know, and the daily stuff. It can happen. And it does happen. If it hasn't happened, well, then we might be uh, kidding ourselves a little bit if we think that. It's all happened. At time to times, the stranger's voice has been there. The challenge is, of course, to stick with the one we know. Who is the stranger here? Oh, could get a bit scary. If it's Matthew's gospel, definitely be the devil. <laughs> uh, but here, definitely in, in, in uh, John's gospel. One thing you really should do, just follow the shepherd. Don't mess around. No point in John's Gospel. Don't bother with the rest, said Jesus. Follow the shepherd. Don't bother. No point. It goes nowhere. Right. Jesus used this figure of speech, verse 6, with them. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Well, yeah. Um... It's very true, isn't it? I mean, uh, the situation we are in, if we are following this as a kind of a chronological gospel, but as a kind of descriptive gospel, we have not yet actually approached the gates. We haven't seen what the gate, the gate thing is all about. We will understand later that the gate too is made of wood and it's the cross, and, and the way forward is through the, through the cross. Um, and so... For the gospel at the moment, it's very interesting to hear that now. If you're reading the gospel, if you're reading John's gospel for the first time, you'll go, well, "What is this gate? I don't get it." I mean, has the story gone up? You know, where is this gospel taking me? I had lots of stuff about understanding and being at one and making sure that I'm adhering to Christ and Christ is the the best thing for me. But where, where's it going to go? I'm not. Mm. Where is this gate? Why am I sheep? Uh, <laughs> so again Jesus said to them, here we go. I'm going to try and explain it more deeply. Very truly, very truly, very truly. Listen to me. This is it. Very truly. It's one of those moments when you stand and you listen, you have to listen close. In truth, I tell you, this is what it's about, very truly. I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoa, here we go. I am the gate for the sheep. 
Jesus is shepherd, Jesus is gatekeeper, Jesus is the gate. He is all of these things. He is all of the, the things that are the mechanism and the pattern for us to follow and be. I am the gate. You can help hold open the gate and have that ability. You can help the shepherd and help people hear his voice because you can speak with him. You can get the other sheep to go with you. And that first part, we can all be parts of that, can't we? But here we go. In the very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. That it, you can be all of those things, but it's only under Christ. It's Christ is the is the key. It's the key. None of those things work unless you've got the key, which is Him, the gatekeeper, the shepherd, and the saviour. Okay. So, virtually, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Says. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. Okay, we're getting the point about thieves and bandits now, all right? No pirates. Thank goodness for that. We like pirates, even though they're very bad. Um, here we go. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. There have been clearly many people trying to um, take and steer the people of God away, haven't they? Um, um, at times the people of Israel have gone astray, worshipping Baal, worshipping the golden calf. Um, if you go back through the scriptures of the Old Testament, time and time again they get seduced by quick fix and easy stuff and wealth and riches and power. It, it, it's loads. There was lots of other ways, lots of other ways of leading us and taking us to a preferred or more fancy or more comfortable or more you know, plush, we think, destination not necessarily all who came before me are thieves and bandits but the sheep did not listen to them the sheep now we've got a thing here haven't we because we, we know about about sheep and goats remember the gospel talks about um, oh, I can't remember which one it is now but Jesus talks about sheep and the goats and about the sheep will be on the right and the goats on the left <coughs> if you're watching this in Horsham Parish you'll remember that from Ten years ago, when I spoke about sheep and goats, and all you lot sitting on the left were looking a bit worried. <laughs> they were sitting on the right, was a little bit smug. Um, but no, no. So we've already got in, in uh, John's gospel. We've like Matthew. It's all about like saying, look, Jesus is here. If follow him, he's the shepherd. Oh yeah. Hang on a second. There is always going to be a choice that you can make. Are you going to be his sheep? He calls you, you might decide not to bother. You might go, no. Nah. You might call me by name, but I'm not going to be your sheep. I, I, you know, I'm going to do it my way, as uh, somebody once sang. Hmm. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me, here we go, here's the promise, this is what's coming up next, this is what the resurrection is all about, those whoever enters by me, follows me, gives themselves up, becomes my flock, allows me to become their shepherd, listen to my voice let me lead them on they will, will be saved will be saved a very powerful sheep thing we know, um, okay, let's be brutal, it's brutally honest. Sheep, of course, are very woolly, very nice. Ultimately, they're very tasty. <laughs> Jesus says saved, he's going to save his sheep. There is more. He's offering them freedom, he's offering them release from something. Eternal life back to my mate Malcolm in uh, Cavendish in Victoria because they have a very old sheep now be 13 years 12, 13 years old 14 years old I don't know 
be saved. Do you remember? And also sheep as well. We're talking about the Old Testament here. Remember, you know, the, the, the sacrifices in the temple. Do you remember way? You know, the, the given a, the given a life to say thanks to God is a great thing. That's another thing that comes up later. Uh, but here we go. We got you know the sheep. Sheep are sacrificial animals. They've given up the commodities. Who else is made to them? Remember Abraham was told to sacrifice Isaac, put him on an altar, sacrifice him just like a sheep. Hmm. Think about that. Don't know why I said that, but it kind of. Hmm. Whoever enters by, by me will be saved. And we'll. Ah, here we go. And come in and go out and find pasture. This funneling through the gates funneling through the gate. Anyone who's ever watched a herd of sheep, flock of sheep, sorry, oh, I'll get it right, a herd of sheep, flock of sheep, they're just herding through, they, they kind of push and jostle, they squeeze in and run out into the new pasture, they always rush off to find the new grass and just join their, you know, spring in their step. Whoever will be saved will come in and go out and find pasture. What's that? Pasture? We've got a whole list for what pasture may be. Heaven, Paris, uh, heaven, paradise, eternity, perpetual light, whatever. The goal, nevertheless. The thief comes. Okay, so always a little bit of a sting in the tail. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Who would be that one? Well, that's you know, that's talking about thief, devil. We're talking about everything which is wrong. You know, there was so much so easy to fall into those ways the thief comes only to steal kill and destroy back to dark and light here again aren't we I came that they may have life the sheep and have it abundantly abundantly it is not just for the few oh let's <laughs> sum up I was going to say not for the few, for the many. Um, <laughs> it's not, but it is. It is not for the few. It is for the. It is for the many. It is for for all to seek and to strive to attain. How do you do it? You become part of the flock. There is no other way. You become part of Christ's flock. Um, so why is the gospel writer included in this passage? Um, it's part of that great sort of building up as to we haven't got to Jerusalem as when we get to Jerusalem and that plummet into and into, into the, the passion begins we will be given a glimpse and we'll be given um, some guidelines the shepherd is going to take a really tough route through Jerusalem it's going to be tough and it's going to almost be extinguished at one point as we knew at the beginning of the gospel with light and darkness but the gate is there that's how we understand it all the sheep bits have been brought together and it creates this positive approach to the death and resurrection of our Lord wherefore what's it got to do with us and it is a real there's a real thing um, the, under, the early understandings of the church aren't there, there's different understandings we're picking these up in our readings not only in the Acts of the Apostles but in the other readings we're having we're picking up themes of in the Gospels written in those first years those sort of decades um, of the church's uh, life and growth um, in a difficult world and, uh, that, and we're seeing the, uh, the confidence that the church grasps and understands doesn't it you know that despite the things of our world the gate's there the, sh the, sh the you know the, the good shepherd has already gone through opens the gate and calls to those that know him and have listened to him you know and that goes on and on and on and on and on and in this early part of the church that's very important you know the first great Persecutions of the church have already been at work. So what? You know, I'm just trying to understand how how is the resurrection still affecting us, and it's relevant now, isn't it? That's still re relevant right now. 
Um, I think it says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I call them by name. I claim that they may have life and have it abundantly. There's a, this whole language that, Je that Jesus is using here is a collective language. Is a collect you come with the, f the flock, get it right? The flock, my sheep know me, my flock know me. Um, I always say to people that say, well, yeah, I believe in God, but I don't need to go to church or do no, no, I don't know any of that. I believe in God, and I know God knows me, and I know Him. Well, that's very nice, but actually, it says clearly in all the Gospels that you can't do it on your own. You need to be part of the flock, learning from each other. How do we hear the voice of Jesus? What I would love to say, hand up, hands up, I'd love to say that every night He phones me up and talks to me. Hmm. You hear it through reading these things, the Gospels, and working it out here. That's how you hear the voice of Jesus. And sharing it with one another, and sharing your experiences with one another, learning from one another, and how they have experienced the voice of Jesus through the Scriptures, and felt his presence in sacrament and other ways. That's how we become the flock. Together. So it works. There you go. Whoo! That's tonight. That's the well. That's the gospel for Sunday. Um, so that's all about sheep on Sunday, as you can uh, guess. So uh, I'll get ready for that one. Okay, folks. Uh, the risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, "Peace be with you." Then, when they glad when they saw the Lord, Hallelujah! The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you, Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, you have this bread to offer which earth has given in human hands of me. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, you have this wine to offer fruit to the divine work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. But with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Leave of the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the, more, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and all your people whom you call to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, Anne, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. So is and Saviour's taught us, so we have the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Christ died for all, and for those who li live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May the risen Christ grant you holiness to follow him in faith, hope, and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.